Hi, Dan here from Watch Waker Appliance Repairs. And today in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to clear out a blocked pump on the later design pump on the Fisher & Paykel top load washing machines. The pump that looks like this. And it's the machines that are often called Wash Smart or Quick Smart or Fabric Smart, although some of the earlier smart drives also used this pump as well. The first thing we want to do is unplug the power. Now you notice one difference with these machines from some of the other models is that they actually hold the high voltage DC for quite a while. So we're now safe. You don't want to just switch a switch off. You don't know if the switch has been wired correctly or what's happening. So unplug it, then you're safe. Next thing we need to do is clear out all the water that's inside here. The best bet is to bail it out with a container or an ice cream container, something like that. Uh, if you do want to take the agitator out, there is a nut there that just undoes counterclockwise. Agitator lifts out, and then you'll find it a whole lot easier to get in there to bail the water out. Once you've got as much water out as you can with the machine upright, you need to lean it back to about a 45 degree angle, and then you'll be able to bail more water out. And the important thing about this is that the drain pump is at the front right hand corner. So by leaning it back, you're bringing that pump up. If you then bail all the water out you can inside, you'll be able to easily get um, the pump off without water coming out. So to get this pump off, we have the hose here. We're going to need to disconnect three screws there, there, and there, and this electrical cable. So to get electrical cable off, there's a small slot on the side with a retaining clip in it. So Get a screwdriver in there and lever it down. I'm not putting too much tension on this cable. There we go, that's out of the way. And then under these screws, we can either use a Phillips with quite a large bit, like at least a number two Phillips, possibly a number three, or I prefer to use. A 10 inch socket. The two top screws we need to take right out. This bottom one, which is just in here, we don't actually have to undo all the way, we just undo it part of the way. We're then going to release that clamp. Pull the top of the pump off and it lifts off. You notice this hose is just sitting in a harness little um, cradle there. Now we've got this pump off. What you can do is take this other hose off straight away. Now we can look in either side and we might be able to see something that's blocking in there and just be able to pull it out straight away. Otherwise, we're going to take this apart further. So now we've got the pump on our bench, we're going to take it apart. If we haven't been able to see anything in here or see something we can't get to it, we need to take it apart. If you can't see anything, something else to check is the resistance of this pump. It should be 90 ohms. So if we just check... And this one is oops, about 91 ohms, so that's pretty much our target there. Usually if they're faulty, it'll be open circuit. So we've got three screws, one, two, three, that hold this, basically this uh, little uh, frame that the pump sits in. And then we have two more below that, that hold the actual pump housing. Well, these screws go through and hold the pump housing and pump motor together. So to get to this screw, I'm coming in through this hole here. That goes out of the way. And then we have these two lower screws. Now something to note is these lower screws are shorter because they're only running through here and not through the that uh, frame as well. You've got two screws that are shorter. 
the position of this um, drain pump housing is quite important because you obviously want that spigot coming out the same way and that can sit on a few different places. So you can just remember the top hole goes through into the screw hole which is right close to the outlet spigot. Otherwise you can do what I've done here, just put a, a permanent marker on there and that will mark it to um, show you which way when you put it back together. Once we've got those five screws out, this just pops open and usually in here is where you'll find you've got a you know a piece of hair clip or a, um, something, you know, a, a pin, something, nails, anything that's blocking it. Or you could have bits of fluff. Um, this is where you're going to clear it out. There's an O-ring that sits on the pump. That's quite important to have. And this will turn. Now you notice this doesn't actually turn smoothly. This is all these drain pumps are this similar. Um, not the smart drive drain pumps, but all the washing machine drain pumps see what they often call a synchronous motor. Uh, the the pump will turn almost 180 degrees, or well, yeah, 180 degrees without much obstruction, and then it kind of flicks over and goes in pulses like that, and that is entirely normal. If you have a lot of side to side play, this one hasn't got any, if you have a lot of side to side play, then that's the motor pump motor wearing internally, and then you're going to need a new pump. So, as I mentioned before, there's actually a little thermal fuse built into these pumps to help them if they're overheating. So, that's in there. If you're not getting 91 ohms across there, it's usually, well 90 ohms, it's, um, I think it's plus or minus 10%. Um, usually they're open circuit if they're failed. And not usually this, it's usually the actual pump windings that are failed open circuit. You can't get this as a spare part. The new pumps actually have a slightly different layout. They store the same plug and all fit in the same space. But the thermal fuse is kind of integrated into them differently than what this one is. So if we've got everything cleared out, now it's time to go back together. We need to line, see how that's got that little spigot there for the screw hole to go in, that goes in the topmost hole, or we can just line up those uh, marks we put on it before. First we want to put the two short screws in the lowermost holes. These are just screwing into plastic, so if you just really wrench on it, you can strip the plastic out. Um, so you want to go up to it, tightens up, and you're taking up the gap away, uh, but you don't want to overdo it. This doesn't just drop down because of the way these screw holes are. It sits like that and then slides forward a little bit as we're screwing it in. I'll slide forward when we get that screw out of the way. It sits in like that and then it just goes forward there. And so we have three, the three longer screws that are going through the little frame cradle here, through the pump motor, and into the pump housing. And so now it's just time to put this back into the machine. Okay, so now we just need to refit this pump to the machine. We're just going to do everything in reverse order to we did before. We put this elbow on and make sure that clamp is on there. And we are going to check. We're going to check to check for leaks later to make sure we haven't got any leaks from these joints here, from that hose, outlet hose there, or from the seal here. So that's on there. This drain hose does have a little wee um, piece that sticks out, which sits towards the front of the pump here. But the easy way to line it is to make sure that the hose is sitting in its proper cradle back there. So we just want to make sure that's going to sit in there. Once we know that's all nicely in place, we'll put this clip on. You could look up into that hose there if you had a blockage you couldn't find somewhere else. Uh, it's unlikely that anything's going to get past the pump and then get stuck there. But that's one place to look. And of course we have got into the top of this... Um, this uh, <laughs> got my finger stuck in there. Uh, into this inlet to the pump. And if you've got something up in the top of that, then have a look at my other video on how to clear a pump from the top. It's basically the same on these machines as the earlier ones. And you can get it clear there. Now we've got one screw here which we only part undid because this here is just a, a clip rather than a full circle so we're just going to pop that onto there and then we're going to push this hose on which should hold it in place. 
You can add that clamp now. As long as it's on all the way, you don't put the clamp onto it's on all the way. And we have the two screws at the top. And we still have that bottom one we just need to tighten up. That's on there. We can move this clamp back out of the way now. So it looks a bit tidier. That's all the way on there. Oh, we've got this one more screw down here. And then finally we have this plug. Now this plug has got three little legs on it, so it can only go in one way round. It's uh, AC 240 volts, so it doesn't matter too much, but it will only sit in one way round. So now what you need to do, lift the machine up. If you had to bail some of the water out and you've been doing this on back about a 45 degree angle, if you lay it down like I've done here with water in it, it's all going to pour out the top. But if you had it on a 45 degree angle, you've been on the ground working up under it, when you lift the machine up, there'll be a bit of water coming to the pump. So you can then test it and tell straight away if it's actually moving the water. You also want to add a little bit of water so you've got a bit of pressure from the water there. And then we wanted to check there, there, here to make sure there's no drips, um, any water running down. So it's actually good to dry the ground underneath the machine or put a piece of cardboard down, something like that. Not necessarily a towel, but cardboard, will, the drips will actually sit on top of the cardboard and it's basically like having a new dry floor. And then we're going to plug the machine back in, give it a test, make sure it's draining, check for leaks, and we'll be done.